Welcome to NMB Air Gun Review. Here we are. We have the guns on 5.5 millimeter BCP air rifle in front of us. Today's the day we start to dive into this thing, and I will tell you that thus far, out of the box, this appears to be a pretty fantastic BCP and very well built. We're going to dive farther into that. So what have I done so far? Well, we've laser checked the barrel to make sure it's true and straight. We have checked the internals of the rifling to make sure it is rifled, rifled properly. We have checked the machining of the receiver to make sure everything lines up perfectly. We have checked to see if all screws are in place and um, there and tight and they are. Um, it's been taken apart. I have lubed it up, lubed it up, although it did come pretty well lubed. Um, the barrel is clean. Did not really require any cleaning, but I did do it. And um, it has been holding air pretty good. I think I may have lost a few PSI since the last time I posted on this. Um, and that could be due to temperature fluctuations. So nothing that I'm really concerned about right now. Although I will tell you, I wish they would not use the silicone on the threads like Catalan does also, a lot of PCP companies do that. Um, it's just bad form, it's unnecessary when you have properly lubricated gaskets, you don't need any kind of thread seal on your air tubes. Um, what happens is, especially with air wanting to creep through, the silicone will dry out, it will uh, crack, um, get smaller, and it just opens up little valleys for air to possibly leak through slowly. So. I don't, I'm not a believer in it. I wish they'd get away from that and actually, uh, and it's, you know, it's guaranteed to happen over time with these anyhow if you use it, but uh, get away from that and just make sure they're sealed up right. That's the proper way of doing it when you're building these. Anyhow, guns on. Um, they're imported into this country by two entrepreneurs um, and they are located in Tennessee. A couple of nice gentlemen, they decided to send me this for review. It's been a long time since I could get to this because I've been remodeling, but uh, here we are, and uh, let's dive into this. It is a 22 caliber. It does have a 15-inch barrel, depending on how you measure. Um, I, rem I measure right just after where the pellet goes into the breech, and we stop just where it stops the spiral on the barrel, and we're at about uh, 15 inches um, maybe a little bit more, but uh, not definitely not a 16-inch barrel, although a lot of people consider these a 16-inch barrel. Um, as you know with a PCP, every little bit matters. That's not to say this will not shoot good. Um, I expect it to shoot phenomenally. Let's get out on the range and test it, and let's, let's start by uh, getting some FPS and um, some uh, standard deviation and uh, energy. Let's see where we're at there. And um, hopefully we can learn a lot about this PCP together because I'm quite interested in it. And I love the tactical look. Um, I love that it's a, well, kind of a short little SBR, although I wish they did make them so they didn't have the foldable stock. So they could be a little short, maybe collapsible stock, but not foldable. That adds just that function right there of being able to fold it adds a good four inches. So we could bring this stock in about four inches from that and we would be at a total link for this rifle at uh, about 29 inches so yeah we're at 33 yeah we're at 33 so that bring it down to about 29 inches total which would be really cool and uh, would really be nice for some fast close target acquisition out on the course on the range so I will be back right in a few minutes, a blink of an eye, it might be a couple days in uh, real world ter terms, but uh, for you, it'll just be a few minutes and we'll be testing this thing. I'll be right back. Okay, here we are at the backyard range. We're at a distance at about 30 yards, not that that makes a difference today, but we're going to be testing the FPS of this 5.5 millimeter 22 guns on. They call it the Big Bang. And it's reminiscent of the uh, Cattleman T1, but seems to have a really good build quality. Um, we are running a covert suppressor on this to make it a little backyard friendly today. And we're going to start today out with, and I'm going to do a shot string. Um, 
we're going to test these a little bit differently today. We're going to go through a 27, 28, a 29, a 34, and a 37 green slug with these. Um, I have no idea what spring is inside of this, but I'm going to load these one at a time. I'm not going to run a magazine, and we will see how this turns out. So right now, stay with me. We're not going to be doing a lot of editing today. Let me pull up my crony, and hopefully it connects. Let's see what happens here. There we are. I think we are now active. Let's run a new group. A new group. And we'll enter a description. Guns on point 22. Test. And we will start this group. And let's see what we have here. Um, let's see here. So we're starting out. I'm loading this by hand. We're starting out with A. 27 green okay loading it by hand we are suppressed and let's see exactly turn on the red dot here i don't have this really sighted in so we're just going by guessing goddamn right now so we will pull off our safety and we'll see how this actually performs And what we got, oh, we're not safe, we're on fire. Okay, sorry about that, guys. And there we go. We got 582 FPS. And we'll do our conversions on that to foot-pounds later on. 582 FPS, that's at 200 bar. Um, now we're going to go directly to a 28 grain and this is a ballistic tip these are cattlemen's new offerings by the way focus on that or not cattlemen's new offerings these are 28 grain called a rex tip they are very reminiscent to me of a jsb um, i have weighed a few of these and they seem to be pretty much dead on so i'm not doing accuracy test right now i'm just kind of shooting into an old door out there and as you could hear that moderator works quite well so, let's load this one in. I like to hand load these simply because I like to take out any um, any uh, errors that the magazine might encounter. So, we're at 582, we're jumping, and that was, again, a 27 green. We're jumping up to an 80, or I'm sorry, a 28 green. Let's see where we're at. 28 green and we were at 577 so there was a drop and now we're going to jump to a 29 green and then maybe we can get some target targets in but uh this is just going to show across the board at uh approximately how this thing will decrease according to green now this we're running right now is a 28 green hollow point um and it's an RBT. Um, the, la the last two we just ran were flat bases, just so you know. So let's see how this this uh, works with a with a flat base in a and a uh, ridge. Uh, Five hundred and eighty. So with the RBT, we got a little more speed out of it, uh, which was pretty impressive so I'm gonna set these up here because that made me very curious um, the RBTs the RBTs seem to pick up a bit um, standard deviation where are we at a 2.52 right now running these greens so let's um that's not too shabby let's uh let's step it up one more we're gonna jump to a 34 green and right now we're just trying to get an idea of how this thing is going to shoot this is just tests basically um, just to see how it's going to shoot. And I will tell you that this thing is built really quite well. So once again, we're into a 30, let me say 34 green hollow point cup base. Let me jump from a 29 to a 34. I probably shouldn't have done that, but that's what we're doing. 
a lot harder of a hit down there, a lot harder of a hit, but we were at 512 feet per second. Um, so this doesn't have a real heavy spring in it, but I bet you the accuracy is going to be great. Let's jump this all the way up right now to a 37, and this is going to be a flat base hollow point. And see what we got. Actually, I'm going to put this back in order so I don't forget later on. This is a flat base hollow point. This is a 37 grain. Oh, you know what? That's not going in that actually, actually as I grabbed the wrong one. That is a 20. That is a. Uh, that's a 25 caliber. That ain't going to work for us now, is it? So, okay, so we're up to 34. That's the maximum we can go with this. Okay, so let me cut now, and then I'm going to run up. i got a red dot on this, and we're going to try to sight this in. And uh, before I do that, let's do this. Let's take a uh, H&N 22 caliber uh, Barracuda match. And let's see, that is a 21.14 grain. And let's see what the speed is on this. And these are great. I find these really great first for a lot of target shooting. So let's see how that performs in this 15-inch barrel. Okay, once again, Barracuda match. There you are. And let's see what we got for speed out of this. Now we'll check our bar, and then we'll start doing some target tests. Seven hundred and ten feet per second. That jumped right up there. Um, so, of course, with between your slugs and your your uh, Barracuda match pellets, big big speed increase. Um, but how is the accuracy? Let's find that out next, and I will be right back. Okay, let's check this out. Let's uh, get into the old uh, prone position here and see exactly what we got going on if i can get some groups here a little closer on the range here about 20 yards out okay i see where we're hitting on target i'm going to roll with that guys just on the edge of the targets which means that the range that i was shooting at um drop the pellet here the range that i was shooting at i must have been just off paper and what i have is a little uh foam background and it just a you can't tell where they shoot so I'm gonna stick with this and see what she gives us for a group and I'll be right we'll show you here in a second exactly what this is here looks like it's gonna be a pretty tight group the mistakes that I make are definitely my mistakes I have a feeling because it seems to be a very well-built very well built uh, PCP. And just a red dot, no magnification. 20 yards. Ooh, same hold it. So it's very consistent. I'll show you these in a second. I got it set. Three, let's go four. You know what though? This PSI this is functioning at right now seems to be the PSI that it really, really enjoys. Yeah, that standard deviation, I bet, I wish I had the chrono on it right now, is, uh... Got some sun kicking up for the dot, so it's getting a little difficult here. Oh, wow, these groups are... This is a good, good group. Um with a magnified scope i i think this is going to be a tab driver this is um really quite nicely done okay quite nicely done very nice gun for fast acquisition with a red dot it would be really really cool I mean, you're definitely going to hit center of mass um Yeah, this is just banging them right in the same spot. Let's do one more for good measure, and then we'll show you the target. 
Well, this is my initial impressions right now are pretty good. Of course, we're going to do a lot more testing with this. So guns on whatever, whoever's building these for you. Um, they're doing a great job. And uh, if you do release that regulated version, and you can keep that set at the 170-ish mark, um, you really got something. Yeah, this is this is really accurate, guys. I, no flyers, no nothing. I, I know it's a close distance, but this is any indication. It doesn't get no better than that, guys. So let's uh, let's grab this and walk up to it. So, so this is a this is a pretty good, pretty decent uh, group that I think here. Not far out, but hold on here. There we are. Look at that. And that's really that's really quite a quite a tight group for a for a um for a <laughs> a red dot. So I'm pretty impressed with that, you know. Um I'll get back here, gonna walk back to the bench, sit you guys down, and uh, get back up to the review room and give you some final thoughts for the first day with the guns on. Just messing around. I might do a little bit of plinking before I go back up there, but you guys watching, it'll be just a second. Go right back. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try this again. I'm gonna pull this back to 30 yards now that I got it pretty much on paper and see if there's a variance in the shots. Um, so bear with me, I'm gonna get this set up and I'll try to fast forward through this for you guys. And let's see at 30 yards if it's grouping like it is at 20. Well, I don't think that that is too bad right there for a 30-yard uh, shot. Look at this. Not too shabby. First group, second group. Now, to be fair, I didn't dial anything in. I said my first shots, I was aiming here, and I hit here. My second shots, I was putting the dot right on the 7 and hitting here. Very, very consistent. Consistent enough where it will, still would have been in the same group. That's a... Uh, that's pretty impressive right there. We're gonna keep that target. And uh, very impressive. And, well, you guys let me know what you think. First initial small tests of this, we're going to be diving into it a lot farther, but pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. Um, guns on, looks like you did a good job on this. Um, I wanna walk back here and check PSI is what I wanna do. Well, there you go. If you can see that or not hoping you can and that is reading about a hundred and fifty five PSI and we have been using this thing use it so pretty much it 
holding pressure really so what are my impressions it's pretty cool um i'm not really set up for this today i kind of did this on a whim but uh it's pretty pretty cool now if i can move this back to my 50 yard spot and do it which i think is going to be i think it's going to work out pretty well um we'll do that on another day we'll move it back to 50 but i need some magnification um although it did do really well with the red dot it's just really hard for me to sight that red dot in without magnification um i'm gonna have to make a run to the uh, store and grab some more targets too because in the move i seem to have misplaced my entire box of targets and pasties so i'm going to need to pick up some more of those but we'll be back this one this one's got me intrigued i'm wondering how far out exactly it will hit um if you're wondering what i was just using that's well my barracuda match it's one of my favorite pellets and they work well so today's conclusion and this is today's conclusion with a little surprise at the end um the guns on big bang performs pretty decent a very accurate gun and it, obviously it's going to be a lot more accurate with the powered scope on it um i just used a red dot today a cheap cheap center point that actually came on my little uh dpms panther arms full auto bb gun so i just transferred it over and at 30 yards well I'll let this speak for itself we have a group here at 20 and then we have the next group here at 30 with a red dot. And to me, that's some pretty decent groups. Um, and I know they can be a lot better. I, I, this, is, this is going to be, there's no doubt, this is a go, going to be with a scope, is going to be a tack driver. Um, I was using the H&N Barracuda Match for those groups. My particular ammo that I like to run in all of my PCPs. But what about the gun itself? What about the PCP itself? Have I found any flaws in it? I haven't. Now, I did not, as you can tell, I did not use the magazine. I loaded them by hand. Well, because I'm using it for accuracy, and anytime I want accuracy, real accuracy, taking out all error factors, I remove the magazine and load it by hand simply because I know there's not going to be any pellet scoring from the magazine going into the breech and something affecting the flight pattern of the pellet or slug itself. So, my preference, that's how I do it. Um, a lot of tests, I will use the magazine. And we can tell, and a lot of you know already, that these particular style magazines do tend to scrape or gouge the pellet. And it does have a bit of an accuracy issue that could range from severe to mild. Um, but, this PCP itself is beautifully engineered. It works fantastic. We shot this down to a little over 150 bar. It was fully charged at 200 when we started. And at that 170, a 170 bar, 172, down to 150 was that beautiful sweet spot that maintained some good standard deviations, which figures I will put on the screen. And um, yeah, pretty decent. But you want to hear the weird part about this. We all talk about quality of PCPs and how things can compile and make a PCP, um, well, less accurate. Um, say you have a breach that's not quite correct, and you compile that with a barrel that's not quite correct, or you compile that with a receiver that's machined off just a touch, anything like that, or a, a choke that's not quite right. When you start compiling different factors into PCPs, well, it can, it can really throw you off quite a bit, as a lot of you know out there. Sometimes you might be accurate at 20 yards, and you'd move back another 5 yards, and it's all over the place, which is a place is the case with a lot of different PCPs, because problems can pile, and they rear up their ugly head at different distances. Now, I have not pulled this back to any any distance that I consider distance. Um, I need this to perform at 50 yards for me, at least, and you that watch my channel would know that. Um, but it did really well at 30, it did really well at 20, it's got a 15-inch barrel, and it's straight as an arrow. Before I started the test, I literally tore this thing apart and mic'd and checked every component and part on this to make sure, in my mind, that there was not going to be any flukes or mishaps and I was going to correct it beforehand if there was and let you the viewer know if there was an issue. There was not. 
it had proper proper lubrication inside. Um, I've never, I don't, I haven't, not a big trigger pull tester. Um, because honestly, my opinion is, and this is my opinion, and I know a lot of you will disagree, but this is how it works for me. That trigger break is all in the mind to me. It's going to break when it's break. It's going to break. You're going to learn your trigger. You learn your trigger, you'll shoot good with your PCP or any gun. You'll shoot good with it if you learn your trigger break, and at least it's consistent. If it's not consistent, I understand. But if you learn it and it's consistent, the pull won't make a big deal. Um, a lot of you will disagree, and well, maybe that's how it is for you, but that's not how it is for me. For me, I learn it, and I don't worry about it. And if I can set a trigger and make it a little smoother, that's a different story. And that's fun to do, too. Diving in is fun. Now, all that being said, I, got, I dove into this, and I checked it all out. We know it's holding PSI. We know the barrel is perfectly straight. We know the rifling is fantastic. We know the machine work inside is fantastic. The trigger is great. Everything's good on this. But once in a while, when you, I dive into something, I make a mistake. And this particular PCP, obviously, it shoots well. But it shoots so well that I made a mistake and it still shot well. So that means there's not a compile of issues. And to me, it's a pretty big issue, the mistake I made. Do you know what I did not do? I didn't tighten the barrel when I put it back in. I can literally, right now, see that? Move the barrel back and forth. I don't even have it tightened down and it shot that good. Keep that in mind. Because that's telling me the straightness and machining of the barrel itself where it goes into the receiver is top notch because it didn't change the trajectory of the pellet. So it's machined properly. And that's good. And that says a lot about guns on. Well, at least this particular guns on. Um, I've heard reports. Um, I'm going to... Somebody else got one. And they, I believe that they had a good review of it, from what I hear. Um, can't remember the channel now, but uh, yeah, they had a, they had a decent review of it, from what I hear, from what some uh, other subs were telling me, and um, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Um, I'm not sure what plant these are coming out of or what factory they're coming out of, but. Seems like they got their ducks in a row. The only gripe, like I said, is using the silicone on the threads for the air tube. Other than that, I think this is a fantastic rifle. Guns on, thank you for sending this to me to check out. Um, yeah, you wanted my opinion on it. I'm impressed. I'm going to do a lot more um, testing on it, especially at distance. And I think it's now it's worthy of a scope. Um, usually a PCP with a 15-inch barrel to me isn't worthy of a scope. Uh, I just use a red dot, especially in this style, and, and use it for uh, center mass fast tarp acquisition on, on, the, uh, on the range. But um, this appears to be worthy of a scope. So now you force my hand to, well, stretch its legs a little bit, if you will, and uh, see what it's really capable of. Um, it shot slugs decently. Um, I didn't do any target shooting with the slugs themselves, but it sh seemed to shoot them decently. I, I'm i pretty impressed. And I have to give uh, credit where credit's due, too. I was using... Cattleman's Covert Moderator. Um, it's really the second time I've actually used it. And you, the test results you saw for the accuracy was using this moderator. Um, the decibels on this thing, we still haven't tested the decibels, but it's quiet. You guys could hear it's basically the click of the trigger. Um, so it quieted it down quite a bit, although this hasn't been used without the moderator. We started out with the Cattleman Moderator. So... I'm pretty impressed with this, but news on that too. Okay, I mean, you got a good moderator here. That's obvious because, well, the groups spoke for themselves. Um, and that's saying a lot about a moderator. And the decibels were obviously dramatically reduced. Backyard friendly. As a matter of fact, I had people right next door having a pool party when I was doing my, uh, my uh, target shooting back there and then and, and testing the... Uh, testing the foot-pounds and FPS, um, and they were none the wiser of what was going on right there, right in plain view. So speaks volumes about 
this particular moderator. Um, yeah, Bob over at Bison Workshop is sending me one of his custom moderators, and we're going to put them up against each other because I hear Bob makes a makes a pretty kick-ass moderator. So that's going to be a, a cool test also. And as you guys could tell, we didn't have the shroud on this. Um, I don't like to use them. I find the accuracy usually in this style rifle is diminished using the shroud. Although this one probably it wouldn't be, especially with that stout little stubby barrel on this. So it probably wouldn't make a bit of difference at all. But um, you know, it's it's unless you unless you really stretch his legs out there. But I want to do that. I'm curious what this is capable of. Will it group good at 50 yards? I bet it does. Will it group good at 75? I I. I have a feeling this is going to surprise some people, but we'll have to see. Um, we'll have to see. I'm interested. I'm very interested. And some other good news, guys. We have Terry from Fox Air Power, foxairpower.com, Central Valley Air Gunners. Go over there on YouTube and check out his channel. He's got some really awesome AEA products, and he's going to be sending me out, I, I believe, one or two air guns um, to be testing. And one is a beautiful uh, 30 cal semi-automatic, I believe. So you want to check him out and stay tuned for those. Um, we got to find some competition for him. The competition... I need something I need competition for, and I spoke of this before. Is my T2, my uh, my beautiful, my beautiful Cattleman T2. This is one of the best performing PCPs that I've ever used, and uh, I'm not saying that because I like Cattleman. As a matter of fact, Cattleman's had a lot of problems as of late, a lot of problems. But this particular one is literally a tack driver, and there's no modifications to it. So that's really cool, and I do use the shroud on this one. Um, this one is a all-day 100-yard, I say, tack driver. People say, what do you mean by tack driver? I say, well, I almost split a card with it offhand and um, was very close each time I did it. I did, I did hit the card, but I didn't split it, so I called it a foul. didn't happen, but it's close. It works. Um, it worked from day one when I got it. It's an extremely good shooter. And that's what I like to consider my 100-yard gun. Um, but we need some competition for that at 22. Need some competition for it. Maybe with a little barrel. Maybe it'll be competition for it. But I can't see it realistically at 100 yards. Maybe it's just my mindset. I've been proven wrong before. But we'll have to see. But what I will tell you is this bike, or yeah, this bike, this uh, this PCP, I, I, I mountain bike, guys. So I, I uh, sometimes I have a little slip of the tongue. Uh, just come back from a ride not too long ago. Um, but this particular PCP is engineered very well. It's put together very well. And I think the numbers speak well for it. And keep in mind, this is an unregulated version. They do have a regulated version that they are going to send me to test also. And that's exciting because if this one shoots this good, initially, initially, um, unregulated, I imagine their regulated version is going to be top notch. So once again, guns on. Thank you guys, you two. Thank you so much for sending this to me to, to uh, get my hands on it and actually start the testing process. Um, I realize this test is all over the place, but you know we had to start someplace and it's a beautiful day out. We just got in the new studio. We just started up the little range out back. And, well, I had to start someplace, right? Thanks, guys, for sticking with me. Thanks for sticking around. And much more is coming. I will see you soon. And we'll have a lot more tests on the guns on Big Bang. I love that name. Big Bang 5.5. And I bet you, without the moderator, it will bark. So uh, probably Big Bang is a fitting, fitting, um, fitting name. Thanks, guys. I'll see you soon. Have a good one. Bye.